Hi everybody, it's me, Cory T, and today I'm so excited because I have one of my very first and longest clients, Nisha, on the line. Hello. <laughs> All the way in London. I'm in Malta still. And um, Nisha's really, you know, I'm really glad that Nisha's um, come on the show. I always call it a show whenever I'm doing an interview. I don't know why. But anyway, because she's going to talk to us about her experience with, well, she's one of my longest term clients. And also she did the Manifestation Masters Academy in the first round. And we have a new uh, round coming up just now in January to kickstart 2023. And I'm really excited about it. And the first round that I did of the Manifestation Masters Academy was kind of like an exploration. I didn't really know what was going to happen, didn't know how it was going to go. And 11 beautiful souls trusted me to take them on that 12-week journey. Um, And Nisha was one of them. So I just wanted to (laughs) talk about your experience. For anyone who is interested in joining in January there are still some spaces left and it's a very very uh, beautiful journey I think Nisha will share some of her, ex- her experience as well um, that is all about inner transformation self-discovery learning to uncover your patterns growing in confidence growing in self-awareness self-regulation and the whole shebang of transformation so hello Nisha, how are you? Hello, Corrie T. I'm very well. How are you? I'm very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, could you share? So, how would you sum up the Manifestation Masters Academy for anyone who doesn't know what it is? What would you? How would you describe it to the people that um, would ask you? So, the way if if someone that didn't know anything about it asked me about it, I'd say it's like a twelve week, almost like group coaching program where you've got I can't think of the word external speakers as well like yeah. and they come in and they share their experiences so you not only have light bulb moments like when you're like I don't know on your own in the shower but like you can have you have them in the group as well you have like discussions and then you'll see other people being coached and then you'll be like oh my god that relates to me as well and um I, I, I don't know if yeah. that covers most of it but yeah like yeah. just having it having like a really close family for 12 for 12 weeks and you get really close and start having light bulb moments together yeah did it surprise you because that was I guess for me that was one of the things that surprised me about the group coaching vibe which you know I knew was going to be a good thing because I'd experienced things like any any addicts anonymous where the whole community aspect was so incredibly healing for me so I wanted to bring that but how did you feel and and uh, what were your expectations and, you know, how what was your experience of the group coaching thing? Was it what you thought it was going to be or were you uh, surprised? Um, so I'd, It was the first time that I'd ever had group coaching. So I didn't really have, um, excuse me, I didn't have any expectations per se, because I always like, if I've not done something before, I like to go into something without expectations just to, just so I don't, so just so that I'm not, what's the word um just so I don't I think sometimes you have an expectation like it's either you're disappointed or you're enthralled in if I don't have any expectations and I'm always enthralled if that makes sense so yeah yeah. I kind of went into it thinking I didn't really think very much about the community aspect actually and I think as you say it's the most healing part and I think actually it's Sardinia Sardinia is it's it's an Italian island isn't it I think they say that the the happiest people in the world live there partly because a lot of them grow their own crops but also there's that level of community yeah and I think that that's something that a lot of us lack because we can have people and friends that are close to us in real life and have these conversations with us but a lot of them aren't on the same healing wavelength or or like they're not on that same journey and so it can make it really difficult so I'd, I'd say that it was actually something I hadn't considered very much but actually turned out to be the most healing part of it yeah, it was so beautiful to witness and be part of. I feel like I've got like 11 friends. I could ring you all up <laughs> now and like have a chat. But like, it's, um yeah, it was a real, it was just beautiful to witness the group come together. And I think like the reason why that happened is because you're all in it to be vulnerable. You're all in it to discover more about yourself. You're all there to 
learn and grow so like you say you've got that thing in common which is one of the things that I hear about so much in this community from clients who are saying I haven't got anyone to talk to about this I haven't got anyone who understands I've got no friends who get it or if uh, I do talk about it they might get it a bit but not really so like having that literally daily communication because of the telegram group I think brought you guys really close together didn't it yeah, I think that's I think that's the interesting thing because I feel like that group, our group has been so interesting in the way that I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine it if there was one like, for example, if let's say I'm going to use a random name, let's say um, Angela. I don't think we had an Angela. Let's say Angela wasn't part of the group. If yeah. Angela wasn't there, I think we'd have felt it. Do you know what I mean, like we wouldn't yeah. have known that we'd felt it. But knowing who's in the group and who has been in the group, I just know that the dynamic would have been completely different without each and every one of those people. So it just felt like it was definitely a family in that way where each person kind of brought their own little, you know, shine. And that was really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And and like you say, one of the things that people don't realize that they're going to benefit from, I think with group coaching is that whole light bulb, light bulb moment of when you're listening to someone else's story and you're like, oh my God, me too. I didn't even think of that. I did not even realize that that was me as well. Yeah. And uh, I think this was brought out a lot more. What would you say about the the guest speakers like Mo coming in? Oh, my God, Mo. Someone in the group had said it several times. Mo's gifted. He's quite he really is like. He has a way of he has a way of just being able to really get down into like the nitty gritty. I remember like one one that one sentence that he said to me somehow has just now become a thing that we say on in the curry in the curry tea group which is uh, when I was talking about my relationship with my father and and how there were certain things that happened and I'd be like why is he doing this and why is he not doing this and he said something that was just so like it was so <clears throat> like some people might say that it I, I don't know how to say it like it was validating but also kind of gave a lot of love to my father because it was like, well, water's water, a rock's a rock and your father's your father. So it was kind of yeah. like this idea of, well, you can't change water and you can't change a rock, but you can't change your father. You kind of just have to love and accept people how they are because at the end of the day, I know if I was him or if I was you, if I was anyone else, I would I would behave exactly the same because that's all I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. sometimes we think, why is this person doing this? Why are they doing that? And it's not that they're out to be malicious it's just that we would do the exact same things if we were them but we forget yeah. that because it's like why are you why are you doing it's always like it's an ego thing as well I think we all have an ego and we're all like why are you doing this thing and then when you realize actually that they're just that way and I have to love them and meet them at the level they're at at the moment yeah know? one of the yeah that I remember that that moment one of the many kind of <laughs> light bulb moments moment. of <laughs> moments so we all had a mo moment I think didn't we there was always everybody I think in the group had a moment where they were like with communicating with mo in the group chat everybody's listening who's there and uh you know what what mo will do is he will go around and speak to each person usually starting the conversation with a really simple question like do you like yourself or um I can't remember the other ones now but a really simple question that actually brought down like a spiral of things for us to discover about ourselves and I think at some point in the journey along the 12 weeks everybody had a moment with Mo <laughs> where they'd be like wow I did <laughs> not see that coming yeah. um so I'm really I'm so grateful to Mo for um you know participating in in the manifestation masters and he's going to come along to next year and bring all of his creativity and amazingness just so you know mo is a you know he's a he's a trained psychiatrist worked for the nhs for a long time um but he moved into um narrative transformation so he does a lot about story work narrative work and also creativity. So he uses a lot of creativity. He's he's bringing in his uh, theater aspect of his practice as well, which he did his PhD in. So it's very, very interesting. Um, and then we also had um, somatic trauma healing therapist, yes. Tanya, come in. Um, what else do we have? Um, the feminine and masculine class yes. with uh, April. We had Agnes Vivarelli. Yeah. 
and I, I can't think of anyone else at the moment off the top of my head. We had a few mo, we had a few mo moments. So that was yeah, that mo was came back a few times. That's <laughs> once wasn't enough, was it? <laughs> but what would you say was so in in uh, sort of in summary, really? What would you say was your favorite thing about that? And what you know, like what what did you what do you think you got out of it the most? Um, I think that one of the I mean, other than the community aspect that we've already discussed and the like the mutual light bulb moments, I think uh, the other part was going from kind of, I don't want to call it shallow or the shallow aspect of, of manifesting or which we like prefer to call conscious creating or conscious creation. We went from kind of, I, I feel like I went from being very sort of shallow in like affirming and which I still do now, but I, I kind of realized that there's a lot more to it. Like there's that nervous system work side of it as well. There's the fact that quite often people say, oh, well, your feelings come from your thoughts. And that's not necessarily wrong, but also sometimes our thoughts come from like our body. Because sometimes we might just, for whatever reason, we might actually have a reason to, or not a conscious reason for why we might feel a bit like tight chested or a bit anxious, etc. We might think, oh, and like, why, why do I feel this way? And you'll start looking for reasons like, oh my god it's probably because it's winter oh, I'm getting SAD like seasonal effect I can't remember what it's called something seasonal affected blah blah disorder and you're like oh my god like uh it's because it's dark or like oh it, maybe it's getting cold and maybe it's because this person said this thing to me and now I can't stop thinking about it and you start kind of shaping your thoughts around how your body feels and like yeah. I think what's really interesting and one one thing that we are, I always say this like based on what I've learned is we're at the top of a food chain and we act like we know the most but I think that's part of the issue because we're so stuck here that we don't do what like lots of like say dogs do we talk about this all the zoomies man I bloody love it when dogs have zoomies <laughs> because <laughs> they're basically releasing lots of dogs have zoomies or like they go a bit crazy after a bath and like I mean people might have to google this to make sure this is this is right but I wouldn't I'm not surprised because it's like lots of dogs find baths stressful so they they probably do flap about and zoom about because that's their way of regulating themselves after something that's quite yeah. stressful. But so we God forbid, that in. if we run around like Phoebe from Friends, sorry, that was my house. Yeah. You heard that. Um, if we run around like Phoebe from Friends, God forbid, like people think we're absolutely insane. But oh my God, there's so much liberation to like no. just running around and flapping about. Yeah, that was your, that was your uh your way of saying it wasn't it right I'm going to do my flapping about <laughs> and that's a practice literally by the way I'm not like the flapping about thing was just a name that we called it in the group but really the free movement moving freely allowing your body to express what it needs to express is one of the regulating practices we learn in the manifestation masters academy so yeah and it's something that I bring in a lot like keep bringing us back to the nervous system nervous system nervous system and to do that I bring in practitioners who have years and years and years of experience and can share their professionalism on that. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's really interesting because because it was it was it wasn't like a it wasn't just for anyone interesting interested in how the Manifestation Masters Academy goes in terms of the curriculum. Often the curriculum is your life. Like we bring in each each week, there is a group call where we have we discuss what's happening for everyone and that's the curriculum that that day you know in one of the days of the week there's two sessions a week and then the other one will be more like um a you know either a conversation about a video that i sent or it will be um, a guest speaker or a topic that we're learning about and then we integrate it in the week and then bring up whatever's happening in our life so well, the way that it's run is um not like okay we're gonna follow this module then this module then this module it's not like that it's it's more fluid which is why i think it's so special because it's guided by the group which is unique which is why i think your group was really well why i think the manifestation masters academy is unique and special i guess what would you say yeah. Yeah, I'd say the same thing because I mean, I you know, I, I don't know anything about the next round of it, but I also know it's not going to have the same energy as ours, and that's not a bad thing because different no. energy doesn't mean bad. It just means well, it's going to be like a completely unique and different group of people that are going to grow together, yeah. and that's beautiful in and of itself, isn't it? It's not going to be the same every time, but would you want it to be the same every time? Probably not. No, that's the that's the thing. That's what I learned from from your group was that the next group 
cannot be the same because we're going to have an entirely set new set of people. So just for anyone confused about this, the next group will be a whole new group. So you will experience the same bonding uh, thing like the first group did. And what's happened with the original group is that they wanted to continue. Um, many of them wanted to continue. So the we've created a smaller group, which is um, the guys who wanted to stay together, staying in their sort of safe family that we created for, for that first group so that that bond can stay as it is. And the new group will create a whole new vibe that will just be yours, right? So you won't be coming in to like people who've been there for ages and already formed friendships and things like that. And that's one thing I, I think none of us anticipated, was it like how close yeah. the group was going to get and how much of a shock it was when it ended. Even for me, I was like, oh God, this is so sad. Like, <laughs> yeah. what are we going to do? <laughs> we have to do something. Yeah. So it's been a very, I mean... I think that it's been for me it as a coach I've never been more proud of um, any anything really um and I'm just I'm really happy you guys were with me um and I'm really excited about the next one <laughs> yeah is there any oh yeah what was I did have another question oh yeah what would you say to someone who is thinking about joining um if someone's sort of like maybe on the fence, I think I've got something for people that maybe maybe on the on the fence and they're like, oh, should I? You know, people that are considering joining, like we never, you know, we never think twice about like that, like maybe half crappy, maybe half crappy, like secret Santa present we might get someone because we don't know what we need we need to get them or we might go to the pub get some bevs. We all deserve that. Don't get me wrong. But I think we also deserve like an investment in ourselves. Like this is what it is. It's an investment in ourselves and our lives and like our growth. So I'd say that it's, I, I don't, I don't regret it. Do you know what I mean? Like I know some people might make an investment in themselves and think, okay, that could have been better. But for me, I look back on those 12 weeks and think that like, I feel like I've grown so much, but I don't actually, it's difficult for me to see that growth until someone else points it out to me because I'm like, oh yeah, 12 weeks ago, I didn't know anything about like somatic healing or like moving through how I'm feeling in my body and allowing myself to just sit in in discomfort as well. And being around other people that were doing the same felt like it helped me do it as well because I wasn't like the only one just sat there like, oh my God, I'm feeling like very, like very anxious at the moment. It felt like I was doing that with other people. So yeah, again, it's the community thing. It's having a family and going away from that idea of I need to, because I, I know that I've had problems in the past and even healing now with, I need to do everything by myself. And I think co-regulation is definitely a thing. And I think that's something that I've had from the group as well. Like there was a day where I had a bit of a, a mare and one of the, one of the people in the group like help, you know, they, he, they kind of coached me through it almost. You know what yeah. I mean? that's what we said at the end isn't it and you 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 pointed out we're all coaches now and and it's true <laughs> like you coach each other you end up like using the practices using the lessons using the things that you're hearing like me say Mo say other people say and then using them to help each other and it's like before you know it you're coaching each other and then you can bring that into your life to yourself and to everyone else in your life and as Mo would say, like he said in my song, if you yes, haven't... I knew you're going to say this. <laughs> yeah, if you just a shameless plug here for my song, new me, <laughs> which is so appropriate. Um, when you transform, you're transforming and you're shifting yourself, and you're not only shifting you, but you're in, you're shifting your entire family and your generational patterns of trauma or the ways that things that have been dysfunctional in the past. You're creating new relationships, not just for yourself, but for other people to be inspired by and that's that's the the amazing beautiful thing so beautiful when you think about the fact that you are destroying those generational patterns because you yeah. don't know what you don't know and obviously like especially for people that want to have like kids etc or even if you don't want to have kids you've got family around you you've got friends around you you are like just by changing yourself you're changing people around you not by like controlling them but you change your energy people yeah. around you change they learn from you the number of times the number of, i I'm 27, which is still quite young. And people are like, wow, Nisha, you're so wise. And I realize it's like, why is this something that I also associated with someone Mo's age? Do you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong, Mo's a stellar guy. You know, he's not old per se. He's like our honorary granddad, but also like, 
why is this when I was like wow me I'm 27 like it's such a weird thing to hear but I think it's because I have invested so much in my growth that yeah I know a lot of things that maybe an average 27 year old wouldn't know yeah yeah oh, oh my god but your transformation since a year ago you know yeah is 100%. enormous um, it's insane that's that's a whole nother story oh god we should we should do another video on all of your transformations shouldn't we yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's true. Like, you know, the investment in yourself and I'm the same. I could not have become who I've become and, and be who I'm becoming without help. I mean, I just couldn't do it without community, without help, without co-regulation, without people who are ahead of me and who understand the process. I couldn't do it. I just think that that is that is that maybe someone might call it a limiting belief. I don't know. I mean, you might call it a limiting belief, but whether that's support from a friend who is going on a similar journey uh, as you are and you're co-regulating with that person um, or you're investing in coaching in some way or a course or a program, I just think it's so, so worthwhile. And, you know, where there's a will, I do believe there is a way. And um yeah, I think there was definitely times in my life. I remember there was there was a time in my life where I um really uh, seemingly could not afford anything, couldn't afford any help and stuff, and couldn't afford to invest in a program. And all the programs just seemed really, really ridiculously expensive, which is why I keep this one to not be ridiculously expensive because I know what that is like to uh, not be able to afford ridiculously expensive things. <laughs> um but um I remember like going to free events and things and and just spending all my time like researching and investing my time I mean I guess that's what I did at the beginning was invest my time in learning and reading and growing and talking to people and seeking out people who are of similar mindsets because you're you're uh that you come like you become like the people that you surround yourself by which is why this another thing about another sort of nod for the group as well is like um as you're healing and you're being inspired by other people's healing you're healing and it's just it's just a domino effect really so yeah that's that is there anything else you would like to say for that uh honestly I think based it's just on maybe I'm called to say it um based on what you said about like money etc but you know I I always like I think this is one of the one of the quotes I said to you by Warren Buffett he says that the more you the more you learn the more you earn you know so always keep learning and a part of that is investing in yourself you know because you're worth the money yeah you're worth the money and I think that's the important thing. Uh, we can have a completely separate video on like my growth from last year. But if you remember, I was like, I was so worried about spending money on coaching and you, you were as being the sweetheart you were was, Oh, how about, you know, you pay me for half an hour first. And then if you want, you can pay me the other half for the, for that other hour. Do you, I mean, that was you coming from the perspective of someone that wants that is in the right area. It wants, wants to sort of give and wants to sort of love people. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been where you all have been in like money, in uh, relationships, in health, in, oh gosh, I've, I've been there with money and I, I had to do a lot of mental shifts to get where I am now. And a lot of like, it comes down to self-worth really it comes down to like, um, believing in yourself and trusting and self-trust um but yeah definitely I can really really empathize um with the journey to getting there and I remember that was one of that you were one of my first ever clients back in the day (laughs) and uh yeah you were one of my first ever clients and I was like yeah of course like it's it's scary it can be scary investing in yourself it can be like am I doing the right thing and there's all sorts of beliefs about money that can come up we did sessions on money as well didn't we in the in the academy um and yes I understand I get it um I've been there but I think yeah I I don't I also don't regret ever investing myself in some way um and I'm just really I'm really happy for the group and it's not I guess it's 
you had a great time and it was beautiful from my perspective as a coach to see like one thing that I noticed that I say to people is the confidence that came out of you guys like the confidence seemed to bloom with so many of the group and the embodiment of that confidence was the thing that solidified it you know like we'd have conversations and they'd share what was going on in the week and the, and hearing the stories of how someone had made a new decision or had a, a conversation set a boundary become that person not just through saying affirmations but through being this new version of confidence that they had in their body and I just believe my personal opinion my my uh reflection on it is that when you are surrounded by a group of people who are there to go hey, I validate you and everything you feel is right and we're on your side and we love you and we're basically the family that you didn't have when you were younger. You just think, fuck it, I'm great. I'm going to go and do and say and be whoever I want to be. And I think that's where the confidence starts to come from. Um, yes. That validation, you get that external validation from the group, but also you learn to give it to yourself, which is, yeah, the really empowering thing, I think learning to validate and love yourself as opposed to like expecting other people to do it for you in it yeah yeah but also the co-regulation that comes from having that sort of family around you that's going to say that's going to validate you however you feel we, yeah we speak about this however you feel is always right even if even if you have like something that maybe you might question oh like this feels like a bad thing to think as soon as we start shaming ourselves that was another thing shame yeah we, we speak a lot about shame because I can't remember how you define shame, but it's kind of like it comes from the outside, doesn't it? It's when people say, oh, no, like you shouldn't say this or you shouldn't do this. But shame dies when we are open about our experiences. And yeah. but in fact, there was somebody in the group that that shared something that happened in their life. And it was a very, very vulnerable thing to share. And they said, I'm going off on a whim here to share this. And because of something they shared, it actually meant that something it actually meant that I could kind of like not like not close the door on something that happened to me but kind of have compassion for something that happened in my life for another person that did something and I was like oh hang on like maybe that was just a nervous system response for that person it doesn't make them a bad person it doesn't make me a bad person it was just this thing happened and it it nobody was a bad person it just happened and again nervous system response sometimes we as you say we repeat really really toxic patterns sometimes it doesn't mean we're bad people it Sometimes, I mean, some, you know, you do have to, you know, I'm just going to put a disclaimer there. If, if someone is, if there's behavior, you can be compassionate about someone's behavior, but also love someone from a distance or maybe not be in yeah. someone's life if, if it's not healthy. For yeah, you, but, you set boundary, yeah. Yes. But then there's also a level of understanding that like, okay, this person like is the way they are because again, it, it rocks a rock, you know, water's water and that person's that person. That doesn't mean yeah. they're a bad person because it's so black and white sometimes, isn't it? People yeah. people have this idea of it being black and white, but it's not. It's a gray area, you know? I people just think have bad in them, even though they're good. Exactly. And good and bad people. And I think like, because we're so used to shaming other people and their behaviors through society and the societal language of the way things are, we naturally will shame ourselves for our own toxic traits. Everybody's a little bit toxic. Um, and it's about being able to see that and understand that and love yourself despite it. The thing, the interesting thing about shame and oh my God, we could talk about shame all day. They were some of our most powerful conversations, weren't they in the group? Yeah. But yeah, like you say, shame, like Brené Brown says, shame dies um when stories are told in safe places yes, um, yes, yes shame yes. shame is secret shame our shame is something that we even hide from ourselves because we don't want to look at it um and we're we're ashamed of it and that shame is very interesting because it comes back way back from the caveman times where if you stepped outside of the group and you did something that was like um you know maybe going to get the group in danger or you went astray or you you know decided to do something different that would put the pack in danger you would be shamed and um outcast uh, which basically would make you feel like you're gonna die so that's why quite often people will have literally suicidal thoughts when they're carrying a lot of shame um and it makes a lot of sense because that shame equals threat danger loneliness sadness um isolation all those things that we are so uncomfortable with feeling um and this is all happening from like the societal values that we're brought up with 
um, conditioning, family conditioning, family values, family expectations, um, shoulds, shouldn'ts. Um, I should be this by now. I should feel like this. Why do I feel like this? Why do I want this? All these things, all, we, all these shoulds that we have um, or shouldn'ts. And being able to share your shame to a group of people who are going to be like, yeah, me too, actually. Or, you know, um, thank you for sharing that. That's made me feel understood and seen is was definitely like, yeah, the, the, one of the most powerful conversations we had I think yeah awesome well I'm gonna end it there I don't know how long we've been speaking but um I'm very <laughs> happy that you decided to come on to the show and you're welcome back maybe we should do another video about um money and all of the things that have transformed in your uh experience with curry tea manifesting <laughs> 100% correct manifesting. <laughs> I know, oh God, we were just talking about my email address and how it looks like correct manifesting. <laughs> Why did I do that? I should have just done create with curry. Never mind. Um, anyway, uh, if you if anyone has any questions or you would like to book a 30 minute uh, call with me to see if this program is going to be right for you, where you're, you're at in your journey, um, let me know. Send me an email. Um, the prices are on my website. You can't book it on the website because I want to talk to people before the group forms. Um, there are about five spaces left and it starts around mid-January, mid to sort of later January. Um, and I would love to talk to you to see you there. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.